Hi, today we'll discuss how to write an analyzer. So here is the standard uh, example uh, from the tutorial site on how to write a Lucene index. Um, so we have some files in the input files folder and we are interested in creating an index uh, with uh, the contents given over here. So let's say we want to parse the content in our own way. For example, let's say my content is delimited by star and let's say that it's uh, I want to store it in a cryptic way. Let's say I just want to take each character and add or increment uh, that character by one in its ASCII value. So for example, I becomes J, R becomes S and so on. So, so I want to delimit by asterisk and uh, store each token, but when I store each token, I want to increment each character just to let's say a simple form of, uh, just as a simple form of uh, encryption. How do I do this? So the answer is pretty simple. You write your own analyzer. Now, how do you write your own analyzer? Um, all you have to do is in the flow that we already have, we create our own custom analyzer. So I have named it my non-standard analyzer, let's say for now. So, um, so what is an analyzer? An analyzer is nothing but uh, a pipeline of uh, filters after a tokenizer. So let's first create a tokenizer. So we can create our own tokenizer. Uh, our own tokenizer can simply be created by extending a char tokenizer and using, uh, you know, mentioning the delimiter there. So this simply tells that uh, star is the delimiter. As long as you don't see a star, keep appending that character to form a token. Whenever you enter, encounter a star, that's the boundary of the token. Uh, you can uh, uh, get the token out. So that's what uh, this says. And then we can create our own filters. Um, filters are simple as well. We extend token filter over here. You have some choices there. Um, to keep things simple, we'll stick with a token filter. You um, override the increment token method. And uh, in this, all you are trying to do is um, read the token contents that you have till you reach the boundary and uh, assume that that is available as char term attribute for you. Uh, length denotes the size or the length of the char term attribute. So that's your token length. Uh, so basically, all your uh, contents are available in the character attribute objects uh, buffer uh, as such. So once you have the buffer, uh, you just take the buffer and copy it into a new buffer and while copying, simply increment by one. So each character that you have in your buffer is being incremented by one over here. So this is just an illustrative function. You could write your own uh, custom method here uh, you could you could drop the entire word you could uh, transform the word into something else you could use some um, external data or knowledge uh, to improve and so on so once you have that uh, you simply go ahead and copy the new content into the character attributes buffer once you have copied it uh, you have the tokens in place and you are done so that's all there is uh, to creating a new filter. So once you have a tokenizer and a filter, so I have a tokenizer, I have a filter, I pass them uh, and return a token stream components. That's all there is to create a, a custom analyzer. So remember, you can keep on adding filters. You could have any number of filters as you may need. Um, since a filter takes a token stream as input and returns a token stream as output, um, uh, it's fairly simple to chain them uh, and create many filters and take the last filter that you have and pass it as uh, a parameter to this token stream components. So we have a non-standard analyzer, a custom analyzer, and we are ready to test out our code. I uh, took a simple uh, test code uh, from, I believe, a Stack Overflow discussion. Um, this simply goes through or looks at the contents of, uh, um, or looks at uh, looks at your token buffer and extracts the tokens. That's all that's happening over here. Um, and and we print 
the tokens just to see whether things are happening the way we expect it uh, to happen. So let's run this code. So this should create a new index. And as you see, um, if I parse this, I should get JS as the first token, DPVSTF as the second token, and so on. So C becomes D, O of the course becomes P, and so on. So just incrementing one uh, letter. Uh, once once we have this analyzer working, uh, all we have to do is pass this to index writer and uh, just index the documents. So this is a standard example you would see on the tutorial page. Okay, so now we have run this. So we have created a Lucene index in indexed files uh, folder. So let's refresh. All right, so we have the index here. So let's go ahead and do some query. Um, I'll take the read from index example. Um, so I have this file phi having IR course in CMI. So if I should be able to search for CMI. So let's go back to the read example and let's query for CMI. So remember that even while querying, um, you want to use an analyzer. So this should also be converted to D, N, J and then compared. So we use our non-standard analyzer again while doing query parsing. Usually uh, during query parse time as well as the index writing time we use the same parses but then that need not be the case always. Uh, let's say you are doing some multilingual retrieval where a query needs a different kind of parsing and content needs different kind of parsing. You may think of writing uh, different analyzers. Okay, so let's run this. And there we go. So we have file phi.txt containing uh, this text. Um, it matches with my query. That's all there is to write uh, your own custom analyzer. Thank you.